I'm Rob and this is the Primordian VR Review by Barefoot Gaming. So let's start with the story. Primordian is set like a billion years ago. The concept is you are a guy that has lived in the shadows and there is a world where there's people that live in the light and there's a certain time every year when you can go from the shadows into the light, etc, etc. The story is quasi interesting, but really the meat and potatoes is going to be the gameplay and the visuals on this one. Speaking of gameplay, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the movement style. There is no teleport in this. This is a game where you are going to have to be able to handle using the trackpad to slide around the world. This is going to be a deal breaker for some people out there and it's important to know that this game does not have any teleport function and to my knowledge there is no teleportation coming. That being said, the movement will either be with your left thumbstick on the rift or it'll be with your left trackpad. When you press the button down or the trackpad down it'll give you the option of sprint the sprinting still isn't very quick, but it's a little bit faster. As for weapons, you've got these funky looking swords, very primeval looking, you've got these weird handguns that kind of look plant based, you've got a crossbow where when you hold the button in you can like really aim very specifically and it's quite powerful. You can pick up shields if you kill people that have shields, there are grenades, and again that's kind of the run of the weapons. As you move through the environment there's a couple things you can interact with that you can either break open or destroy to give you either health or to give you uh, grenades or that sort of thing. And the combat is either aiming with your weapon or swinging your sword or holding your trigger in to charge your fist. So let's get to the actual review. At $27.99 Canadian, I find myself kind of torn in a bunch of different areas here. This game is beautiful. It is Avatar beautiful. That's I feel like that's kind of what they're going for. I can see kind of like a Turok-ish feel. The game is very linear, which isn't always a bad thing. You'll start off at one spot and you will kind of follow a path. The path isn't very wide, so you're going to encounter the same enemies every time you play through. It's not going to play through differently, which is okay. The entire gameplay is about two and a half hours for part one. There are a part two and a part three coming, and as a major plus on this, the part two and part three, and I've talked to the developer, are going to be free. So when you pay your 28 Canadian on this, that's it. You're going to get the entire game, part one, part two, and part three, just to be clear. That being said, the combat, which is a big part of this game, is just all right. It's it's okay. A lot of the enemies that you're going to face, you're just going to be swinging like crazy to either lop off their heads, lop off their arms, and it looks really cool when you do it, but it gets a little boring. There are different kinds of enemies, enemies that will drop out of the canopy. It's not like you're only going to face one kind, but things like boss fights, I didn't actually find fun. I just found them kind of monotonous. I found them long and I found them drawn out. The artificial intelligence is also mostly poor. So when you see a bad guy coming up up ahead, and you back up and get away from them, they'll start swinging their swords and stuff and they won't always come at you. There will be enemies that'll land on your head, which you know they're not actually intended to be stuck up there, but part of that again is because the game is still early access. The AI does need work in its current state. The soundtrack is fantastic. So the game gets major bonus points for the soundtrack. Whoever did the sound, A+, plus, good job. It really helps for the immersion and for everything else. It just makes it feel like a more polished piece. Also, the environment that you're moving through isn't totally static. For example, as you're moving past certain trees, you'll see a big snake that's coiled around and moving through. You'll never actually see the snake itself, but it makes the environment seem more alive, which is really nice for a game like this. Did I mention it's pretty? It's oh so pretty. This game looks really good. I didn't find any issues with performance. I dropped some frames when I was recording the video because it always does that while I'm recording and playing. But performance wise, I would say everything was good on that front. In the end, it looks really nice. And for some of you that are looking for something where you're okay just running down a path, working through enemies, you're gonna love this game. For others, you're not gonna find it innovative enough. You're not gonna find it doing anything really, really well, aside from, like I said, the graphics and the audio. So I'm sitting at a three out of five on this game. I would recommend it, but I recommend it if you're looking for the things I have described. If that doesn't really sound like it's something that's gonna float your boat, if it doesn't really sound like you're gonna be able to handle the trackpad locomotion over the teleport or other options, then I'd say you probably wanna stay away from this game. Three out of five, that's my final score. Thank you again so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. The only way you're gonna know when these videos come out is if you are a subscriber. 
Don't forget to like, comment. I love hearing from you no matter what it is. I always do my best to try to respond. Talk to you again real soon. See ya.